Hi everyone, so I will uh, uh, present you how to uh, make a complete or proper map in QGIS. Um, this is uh, part of the HEF212 uh, course at UNIS uh, that is about snow and ice processes and uh, I would like you to do a map um, for the field report. So uh, what we will need uh, now is uh, start with the data so the data um, that we need. So we will uh, look at the base maps of Svalbard and how to add them uh, to QGIS. And uh, that will provide the background maps. And uh, we want the uh, information uh, about the two glaciers that we are looking at. So Telbrien and uh, Lukumbrien, the extent or outline. We can get that from uh, Beams. So, um, to start with, we will uh, we will uh, I will remind you how to get the uh, um, base map layers from the Norwegian Institute. So that's what we need here. We will go to geodata.npolar.no. Uh, that is. So, and what we will do is um, go to the part that talks about base map services. It more or less uh, cached some of the base map that they have uh, onto uh, your software like JS. So, what I'm interested in is, for example, the basic uh, map of Svarbat, Svarbat also known as Svarbat Topo. And what I just need is this WMTS. So um, if you open it, it's a HTML file with a lot of uh, information. Uh, I don't need to know what's in there. Uh, what I just need to is to copy the link. So I copy the link that is in there. Um, when I've copied this link, uh, can go in QGIS. Mine is already open. I saved it as a GF212 tutorial. Um, and then I go into layer, add layer, add WMS, WMTS layer. And when I click on it, I get uh, a, um, a page. What you need to know is to start a new. Service connection. Let's call it Svalbard uh, Topo. And what I will just need to do is to copy the URL. And that's it. So name, URL, and OK. And um, then I will connect. And now I have this tie set. So um, that's it. Uh, what you will see is in your um, uh, layer browser, you actually can see that this layer here has been added. And um, if I double click on it, uh, then um, you can have um, the map of Sabard, and if I zoom in, there's different uh, scale, and we can look at Tabricum and Tabricum. Uh, it's a nice one to, nice, uh, a nice trick is to always start with this uh, map when you start a new map, as it will set the um, uh, coordinate system uh, into UTM 33 North. Another uh, nice map to have would be the auto photo, and that also you can get. Uh, on this website and that's this link here and you see the projection uh, UTM 33 North so now we have two, the background, background maps so we have done this uh, part one uh, part two uh, we are going to add uh, the glacier outlines. So 
we will go on uh, online on uh, glimpse.org slash map slash glimpse also shown here um, and uh, when we load it we arrive in southern america so first let's go to svalbard close to longibion and that's where uh, my two uh, glasses are this uh, this glimpse is a project that uh, collects all glassy outlines and ids in the world and now if i click here with the left click um, it gives me the details and now we can see um, two outlines two inventories and some uh, uh, the name of the glacier so there are three um, three entries for Glecumbrian and that's because there's like three dates so from 1936, 90, 2003 so um, let's start and then I can just click on download um, and this is the part that I need to so we keep in S3 shapefile as a zip format and holes so um, I just click on download the data and when while it does this I can open um, I will want to do the same just again left click left click here and now I see Tabrian for the same more or less the same years and then download data okay so now we have uh, both glaciers and now we can come back to QJS um, so uh, that's the two parts I've downloaded and what I'm interested in who is the polygon so now I just added Tebran and we can do the same for Blackenberg okay so you see they are here both of them um, something we can do is uh, to reduce the opacity so that I can see through very shortly uh, so something to we can change the fill um, I like to increase the outline looks nice uh, red is okay and what I will do is this color here, I will put it to 35. And okay. so now it looks like this. And um, a small trick would be to copy the style and just apply it, paste the style. And I have my two glasses. Um, something you see here is that there's the three outlines from the different years. So um, something uh, we can do to select them is um, to open uh, the attribute table. So if I click here, so now we have the three polygons and here is the source date. So I want the key to give the one from 2003 and remove the one from 1936 and 1980s. So to do this, I toggle the editing mode and I simply select um, so both with the shift, clicking on shift, I can select both of them. And then I can just delete them with the uh, uh, trash bin option. And I remove the toggling, it asks me uh, if I want to save it, save the file and now when I go out I have only one nice outline so let's do the same with 
Glico again. So let's open attribute table. Toggle editing. Now 36, 90. And select both. And I throw in the bin. And save. So now I do have two nice glaciers Tabrian and Black Umbrian. So that's the information I need to uh, to make a nice map as an introduction of my uh, field report. So now comes the next step and that's uh, we will need to add all the elements of a map so um, let's start with uh, a new project uh, or print layout. So this is this option here. You we have to start a new uh, layout. So I create a GF two twelve tutorial. Press enter, and now we enter in this. Uh, uh, layout. So first what I will do is I will add a map. I click on the symbol and just, I mean, I, uh, I don't mind having the whole page. I keep a bit of space around it. Um, and something I can do is I can control the scale here. Um, so 50,000 to make it uh, larger or um, if I have some information to add inside I can go a bit a bit uh, oops, I have something I should be careful um, so here I am on this uh, select move item but if I select move item content now I can move the map inside so uh, maybe 30 is a bit too high resolution. Um, sometimes it can be nice to, um, to move uh, the map so we can also cheat and change the orientation of the map. In that case, it should be fine because the glasses are east west. Um, so now we have done the first part. We started a new project. Uh, we added a map layout, we corrected the zoom level um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to add another map so we click again on this option here and I want a small inset map on the top right corner um, oh sorry about that it's going to get a change uh, the scale um, this is, I go to a much higher number So in that case, I have 10,000, uh, sorry, 10 million. So I can move the inset again. Cover nicely the whole map and then can make it a bit bigger now. Um, a trick now is to add the location of this inner map onto the larger map. So uh, what we can do is we can add where is it? So that we don't need that we don't need overviews. Yes, overviews. So now we click the plus button here and one will appear here. And then what we do is we can add the map frame, so the map one, and uh, we don't see it actually right now. Um, but to make it more visible, I go into the symbology um, and make it very red and not transparent. Uh, we can start to see a small dot here. And uh, to make it much more visible, 
I just increase the stroke width to a fair, to a fair amount. Let's go to 10 even. Um, and then add the third line. Here you go. Um, so 10 is a bit too much, so let's go 5 or even uh, 3. And let's change this color to red. And you see it looks like a um, uh, it doesn't look like a square and it's because of the joint style. So what I can do is I can do uh, change the edge plot and now I have a square. So now we can see the inner map uh, on the uh, overview map. So um, that's correct. Maybe to make it look uh, nicer we can add a frame, a uh, black frame, um, the background is okay. Um, what I like to add is grid. So a grid um, will give us the uh, scale. Um, so if I write, if I need to remember now the coordinate system of my map and it's in meters, so that if I would have to write uh, 10,000 meters to get every 10 kilometers or 100 kilometers. And now we start to have this uh, straight line. Uh, but when I like, what I like with this big um, overview map is that we can share, um, is we need to know the curvature of the Earth so that it's in the polar regions. So what we can do is we can change the uh, coordinate system in the CRS and we can go back to um, WS84, which is embedded in longitude. So you can see here. Okay, let's send a little bit up. And it means that now um, I can, my unit is degrees, and I can add one degree. Maybe it's a bit too much, one degree, so maybe two. Let's see here. It's even a bit too much. Now we have like five degrees and two degrees on the map, and that shows the curvature. Um, it's um, the line style is not so nice, so perhaps I can add like a dotted line, and it looks uh, much nicer. We can also draw coordinates. Um, so I just click in draw coordinates. Uh, something I will, that I like to do is to remove the decimals, coordinate precision, zero. Um, and it's a bit too much uh, text around. So I can uh, perhaps uh, keep the bottom, that's okay. And actually I can put them inside the frame and I can remove right, I can remove top and this I keep inside the frame. Um, you see that there is a bit of um, shift here, so what I can do with this grid again Need to modify the grid. There is an offset here, so we can um, perhaps move the Y. Uh, no, we can. But we can keep like this. Yeah, this one is. So now I've shifted um, the grid. Actually, ah, I'll do it again. No, I don't want to have second grid. Oops. Luckily, I can undo. Um, make it better. Like this. Ah, well, it's a bit annoying, I just. Uh, 
Gibi geldim. Something like this. We will survive. Okay. Uh, so that was for the first part. Uh, now um, let's do the same for the second map. So now uh, we will add grid again. Actually, always don't forget to select the map. Yeah. So now we add a grid to the main map. Now I want in meters, maybe every 10 kilometers. And then make sure that when this is facing the north. And I add this is too much. That's not that many. So now it shows me uh, one kilometer by one kilometer. Uh, maybe um, I prefer when it's not as big as this. This is much better. I really learned. I can add crosses, but I like solid map. Uh, we'll just make the change again. The type of line to dotted line. It's a bit slicker. Um, and again, what we will do is so we have added the frame style, zebra. And we're going to draw the coordinates. And we can keep them all around for that time. We remove the coordinate position. And um, we are fine here. So we are done with the maps. Now we can add the necessary information. So the scale. So I clicked on the left button here, scale, and now we have a scale from uh, 0 to 750 to 1500. Um, we can add a frame, uh, yeah, we can stay here. Now I can add the north image by uh, north scale by adding a picture, and again I draw part here and what you should know here the trick is to go to search directories so in search directories there is this uh, symbols right here that you can add um, and like uh, the other parts you can add a frame in the background if it wants yes and then background. Um, Sometimes it can be nicer to add a bit of opacity so we can see the north. Uh, we could do the same with the other one afterwards. Up. So now we have a north um, part. Something else we can add is a legend. So we can add the legend here. It will automatically uh, find what is in the PGIS file. Um, so to change for us, we could change these names here. So the best is to come back here and rename the layer. So click on N and rename the layer tell layer. So I can save, and if I come back, this is auto update. Um, so if I click here, this should update itself. Yeah, we don't need these two information, so I can go below. Delete it. Um, 
what we can think about the frame and the other for the other and I think we can just give it a title later and we are done with it so here we have a full map um, what we can do is we can save it as a PNG uh, something you should know is there's an error warning because this uh, base map service base map services um, have some uh, limits uh, sometimes you won't see all the uh, fonts here or text that's because it depends on which uh, zoom scale we're, us we're using so now I'm saving in my desktop uh, and the DPI is OK, 600 if you want to have high resolution. And you can save it as a, a PDF if you want to keep it like this. And now here comes my final map. So you see the names disappeared here. Uh, and that's because of the layers. If you zoom out, the, the names will come back. So uh, something you can... Um, that's actually why you see the text. You can guess the text here. So something you can do that I forgot to do is you can add text. So I clicked on the text button here. And now I can go here. I write Ble Combrian. It's a bit small. So what I can go to font make it very big maybe not too big 424 is ok and center middle and now I can put it on the glassy and I can copy paste and do the same tab in And um, if it does not uh, match, what they can always do is they can rotate the font here by rotation. Mm -hmm. Then that's good enough. I mean, I prefer when it's straight. So what I would do here is I would put Telegram at the top because it fits. Okay, so now let's save it again and now we are done. This will be the map, and then you can add other information as you wish. Okay, thanks for this tutorial and if you have questions send me emails or we see each other on Slack.